Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everyone. Thanks for watching my quick review of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I absolutely adore the Zelda franchise. I did have a Game Boy Pocket at one point when I was a kid, and Link's Awakening was one of the very few games that I had, but I never actually played it that much. I don't remember much of how I felt about this game specifically at that time, but I realized recently that I probably never played it much and never played my Game Boy much at all because I don't really like playing handheld games and even today I almost never play my Switch in handheld mode but I did however get the Switch remake of Link's Awakening and I played the heck out of it just docked not in handheld mode. Is this the best story in a Zelda game so far? If not it's pretty close. The original Zelda doesn't have much of a story, but then The Adventure of Link and A Link to the Past are both pretty great. Part of what makes this story so great is the silly little design choices, and then one character in particular that really puts this game's story over the top. More on characters and design later. Even other than that though, this game's story makes it stand out from the others. Unlike a different reincarnation of Link taking on the mantle of Hero, like is the case in most Zelda games. This game's Link is the Link from A Link to the Past. After the events of that game, he goes out adventuring, gets shipwrecked, and wakes up on the island of Koholint. You know, the characters in this game really aren't that interesting overall. We've got Link, but no Zelda and no Ganon, mostly. Instead, we've got the Mario-like Terran, who even turns into a raccoon at one point, more on more Mario references later, and his daughter, Marin. Marin is really the heart of this game. What makes Marin so great? She exists outside of Link. She has hopes and dreams before Link even comes to the island, and her story still continues while Link is off doing other things. Her story is great, and she's the only character in a Zelda game to make me cry. Other than those two characters, we have the first appearance of a wise owl helping Link along his way. We also have several characters from other Nintendo properties. My favorite is absolutely Wart from Super Mario Bros. 2. His little cameo made me smile so much. So like I said before, I play the Switch remake. I don't remember how I felt about the Game Boy version's graphics, but I know the graphics of the Switch remake were a delight. When it comes to design, I was taking nitpicky little points off just because many of these characters and monsters existed before this in other Zelda games, but they are all used so well in this game. It's a special treat when you get to see all the various Mario game monsters who made their way into this game, and even a brief Princess Toadstool reference. The odd tonal needle scratch this makes is actually completely worth it. I also really like the dungeon designs, and they're for the most part not too difficult or confusing. Y'all, the music in this game. The composers, Kazumi Tokada, Minako Hamano, and Kazue Ishikawa, had already done great work with the original Game Boy score, taking ideas from Koji Kondo's original Zelda score and putting them in this game with their own little spin on them. The bleeps and bloops that the Game Boy is capable of really come alive with their work. But then for the 2019 Switch remake, Ryo Nagamatsu's extra work, like having many of these excellent themes played by a wind quintet, really just brings so much joy and excitement to this score. Tall Tall Heights is a standout favorite of mine, and that's what I covered and what's playing in the background of this video. The gameplay in this game is very good, but it's not quite as good as most of the rest of the Zelda games. I think we can most closely compare this game to A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past just feels a bit tighter and cleaner. I think in a game like a Zelda game, it can be useful to look at the various power-ups, tools, and pieces of equipment that you can use. Returning in this game and still working well, we have the powered-up versions of the sword and armor, the power bracelets, the ocarina, flippers, shovel, and bombs. Also returning, but with diminishing returns for one reason or another, we have the mirror shield, the pegasus boots, 
They feel so much sloppier in this game. The hook shot not really as useful in this game. The boomerang. It's interesting that it's actually a powerful weapon, but you have to go through so much to be able to use it, and you get it so late in the game. And the magic powder. The bow in this game feels comparatively kind of underpowered and difficult to use, but it tends to be one of my least favorite tools in any Zelda game. But the standout returning MVP in this game? The magic rod. Without a magic meter, this thing is powerful in this game. Then we come to the single new piece of equipment in this game, which is what makes this game feel so markedly different from A Link to the Past. The Rock's Feather. Link can jump! I, I mean, okay, he could in The Adventure of Link, but that was a side-scrolling game. Here, so much of the game is built off jumping over pits, obstacles, and enemies. It's really fun, but also adds to the slightly sloppy feeling of the game. Overall, big plus though. The mini games in this game are just alright. The Trendy game is pretty fun, and it's easier than a crane game in real life. The fishing pond is a bit annoying, only because I feel like it isn't completely perfectly explained, but it's really not that bad. The Chamber Dungeon and the Rapids are both just okay. It helps that you're not forced to play any of them, though. Overall, this game is pretty easy, especially if you collect enough shells to get the Koholint Sword. And if you're playing on the Game Boy Color or the Switch, and you go through the color dungeon and get the powered up armor. You know me, I love easy games. My nitpicky scores have given this game an impressive 93%. I feel like this game deserves a 97%. When you average those together, this game gets a 95% or an A. Should you play this game? Absolutely. Any way you can. Should you get the Switch Remake? I loved it, but it is pretty expensive as far as video games go. If you have access to a Game Boy or Game Boy Color, the 3DS's Virtual Console, or the Zelda-themed Game & Watch, you might not really need to also get the Switch version. I do not have any of those options, only my Switch, so that's the version I played and I really loved it. Thanks for watching, everybody. What do you think of this game? Do you think the Switch remake is worth it? Please let me know in the comments. Please give this video a like. Follow the channel if you're not following already. I will love you forever. And maintain your groovy selves. See y'all next time. Bye -bye.